Welcome to r r Relationships in Real Estate. I'm your host, Chris Silva, and with me is my beautiful wife and star of the show, Corey Silva. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us here on r r Chris and I are the owners of Silver Realty, Silver Lending, and Silver Property Management. We've been in the real estate and mortgage industry since the early 2000s. We're super excited to have you all here with us today on Valentine's Day. We appreciate you showing up and always showing your support. Well, welcome to the second week of February. It's Valentine's Day. Yeah. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Uh, Who has exciting plans for the evening or for the day? Leave us a comment and let us know what you have going on. We'd love to hear about it. Now, I got a question for you on Valentine's Day, right? Because I see these Valentine's Day events for women. But you know what I never see? What? Palentine's Day for Palentine's. the men. Is that a thing? What? I think you need to make it a thing. <laughs> what are you waiting for? You need to start planning for next year. You'll have your Palentine's Day and you can do your dominoes, you know? Oh my gosh, I would be so amazing. It should be a thing, right? I think you need to bring that. All right, we'll start planning for next year. You can start planning for next year, <laughs> pal. <laughs> Palentine's Day, anybody? Oh my goodness. Yeah, because that's become a thing. It's huge. Valentine's Valentine's Day is huge. Yes. It's almost, I think, bigger than just the regular Valentine's now. It might be. You know, I kind of have an issue with it. Like, I love a good Valentine, a good Galentine's event. But these guys who be coming up and trying to create their Galentine, like, no. Guys, stay out of it. This has nothing to do with you. I've been seeing a lot of things posting on, like, social media popping up, like, certain male-led events, but it's a Galentine's. I'm like... That's not your space. You need to get out of it. Yeah, but Is that it, just me? Am so, I a little okay. offended by that? But I don't even get invited to Galentine events anyways. But I'm just like, really? Maybe you're being a little sensitive. You can't just keep that to yourself? Try to capitalize on it? It's funny you mention it because, you know, I came from my networking meeting. And right. I'm not going to mention any names, but there is a new um, business owner. He's not a new business owner, but new to the group. Right. And he's actually hosting a Galentine's Day event tonight. I'm sorry. Tonight. I have a problem with that. But it's all women speakers coming up. Oh, okay. But he's just the one that organized it. So is that bad? No, I, I don't I think I don't that's think bad. it's bad, but I He's mean, just looking out for his lady clientele. That's all. Oh, is that what he's doing? I'm okay. sure there's some type of some type of motivation behind that. He's just taking care of his people. That's, that's oh the way I see gosh, it. Oh, my gosh. Good for him. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Well, Chris just came from a networking event, and he started celebrating Valentine's Day with some of his pals. Apparently, one of the guys was giving out Hershey kisses to everybody. (laughs) And, you know, Chris always has something to say, right? And he was like, Hershey kisses? I want a real kiss. And what happened? So, yeah, I was was playing, obviously, right? I was like, I don't want a Hershey kiss. You know, um, I want the real thing. I said something like that. And the guy kissed me. Wow. It was on the cheek. Careful what you wish for. Yeah. You know what? It's so funny because it shut me up real fast. Um, (laughs) Maybe sometimes you need to think before you speak. Yes, I do. (laughs) And and totally put me in my place, right? Right. Uh, But, you know, listen, I grew up Hispanic culture. Like, I grew up kissing, you know, on the cheek, right? Right. Right. Kiss your grandpa, your father, whatever. It was kissing on the cheek. It's not a big deal to me. I'm secure in my manhood. Obviously, Dave... Uh, Contrell, who sells solar, if Mm -hmm. anybody's looking for solar stuff, he's definitely uh, comfortable in his own skin as well. Right. But um, I thought it was funny. Caught me off guard. Why you got to share the love on Valentine's Day? I'm not mad about it. He was really giving out kisses. Yeah, he gave out kisses for (laughs) real, for real. Anybody wants one, hit up Dave. All right, for sure. Well, um, we have been building to this Valentine's Day since the last month. So the big question I have for Chris is, are you prepared to make an amazing uh, Valentine's night? Uh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I've been ready, girl. I've been doing this daily 50 every day. I'm ready. He is but ready. as far as dinner, no. <laughs> Too I'm not, much. I'm not, I'm not ready You're for not dinner. You're not ready? You know what? What? So I'm going to be honest. In my head, I'm like, oh, I'm going to make vegetable lasagna, right? Okay. And um, I looked up the recipe and... That was like two weeks ago or something. Okay. But I haven't looked at it since. So I looked at like what I need in preparation. But but I, what I failed to do is look at the 
the time it's going to take to make it. I, I don't think there's enough time today. I think we might have to go out to eat or something. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm sorry, but what time is it right now? It is 12.15, and you don't have time to prep for this dinner? Maybe after the show. We'll see. Oh, wow. Maybe we'll see. I think I think okay. tonight would be the perfect time mm -hmm. to take the kids out to CPK. <laughs> you are out of your damn mind. I'm not going out if we to go, eat if, on Valentine's if Day. We go no. at, if we go at 5 o'clock, there's not going to be a crowd yet. Go feed the ducks, be all happy, come home, have some ice cream, watch Do a movie, cuddle. Do you all cuddle. love how Chris just kind of found a way to just weasel his way out of Valentine's Day dinner? I love this. <laughs> Little weasel. <laughs> I mean, I think I kind of uh, saw the signs. Like last show, he was just trying to find ways to get out of it. Right? Was it last show or the show before where you're just like, who even likes Valentine's Day anyways? He likes to just sprinkle in the little subtle hints about how Valentine's is going to go. I wish I was that smart. <laughs> I, I wish I could take credit. I think in your head you knew like you didn't like want to do mastermind. this on Valentine's Day. So he was just like, mm, yeah. It's, it's, I don't think I'm going to have time. It's going to be a big dish. I think you got to make, maybe I should make it for family dinner. Maybe that's more realistic. Oh, no. <laughs> no. No. Is that a no? Okay. That's a no for me, dog. You know, but give me a little credit. I made breakfast this morning, right? Yes, yes. And we have, I guess I, I would take a picture of it, but I didn't post about it because I've been really terrible about posting lately. Mm -hmm. But heart shaped pancakes this morning. Chris did make some beautiful heart shaped pancakes and. Uh, he got up a little extra early to do that. I came home from the gym, and he was in there flipping hearts on the grill, uh, on the griddle. Some of them were breaking. I did break a couple hearts, like too. Like my heart right now, because I'm not going to get a Valentine's Day homemade dinner. I think they have but lasagna. Okay. I think they have lasagna at CPK. Do they? I am not having <laughs> lasagna at CPK. <laughs> what is this CPK? No. No, it's not happening. I think we're going. That's a no it's for me, dog. It's happening. Five o'clock today. Oh, my goodness. Well, this morning, Chris did pull out the stops. He made breakfast for the family. And while we we're getting ready, he showed up with a big bouquet of balloons. And he got flowers for us and a beautiful orchid plant with multiple orchids in there. So thank you for that. And we went shopping and got some stuff for the kids, too. We got a an azalea. It's kind of like a plant tree. It's really beautiful. So um, the kids and I are going to plant it this week. And you know what I did not get you? What? But our producer did. These uh, box of chocolates oh. over here. Mama always said, life is <laughs> like a box of chocolates. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so Robert did get me a box of chocolates. Thank you, Robert. And it did have one of my favorites in there. So um, he's trying to get me to deviate from... My goal, which is my transformation challenge goal, it's eight weeks long, and I've been very strict about what I consume. So thank you for um, give, fulfilling the sweet tooth aspect for me. Yeah, I mean, you don't, just have, to one. Eat, you don't have to eat the whole damn box. Just, just one is one. not going to kill me. It's not going to kill you. You'll be it fine. It is Valentine's You'll Day. So yes, yes, I'll be fine. Um, but yes, so Valentine's Day has been off to a wonderful start. And um, oh, Tanya's here with us. She says, hi, guys. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's hi, Day. Hi, Tanya. Thanks for joining us. Well, we've actually been feeling a little under the weather, both Chris and I. And I'm wondering if that's going to affect our plans for the evening. But it sounds like probably not because he wants to go to CPK um, to go feed the ducks. And then maybe we'll go to bed early. I'm so down with going to bed early. Okay. It sounds really good to me. Yeah, so it's so funny because the other day, you know, anybody that's been married a long time or been together a long time, we're not in high school anymore. You're not constantly, like, making out with your spouse, right? Mm -hmm. Like, doesn't happen. Um, you know, obviously still show affection and whatnot. Right. But me, so I, I decided to make out with Corey the other day. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you decided. You mentally made a, a choice to make out with me. Well, we spent some, so we, you know, we swapped spit, <laughs> and and then so afterwards, I hear the, I hear the, uh, uh, uh. she's clearing her throat, and I'm like, are you still sick? She's like, yeah, I still have a cold. I'm like, oh boy. She's like, that's that's the cost of love. <laughs> so now Price I got, you got to pay. So now I got the cold too. So. 
you know. You were going to get it regardless. Everyone in the house was feeling under the weather. <laughs> Thank you for blaming me, but love hurts, okay? <laughs> love hurts. <laughs> I'm glad I could share everything with you. Yeah, even germs. I love it. I know. I'm so generous. <laughs> <laughs> so how has everyone been enjoying the sunny weather? Hasn't it been so nice being all nice and warm? Usually it gets warm like halfway through the day. Um, there's a little bit of wind, but we don't have to worry about that because, you know, with all the rain lately, there's no fires. So that's always a good thing. But it's have been you been really enjoying nice. it? We missed a whole fire season, yes. which is great. Mm-hmm. Uh, listen, it has it's been sunny, but it's been cold. Mm-hmm. So Chilly in the morning. The, and we the still evening. need we still need to dress the kids in layers. Right. You know, they wear like a thermal shirt, 32 degree shirt, then a t-shirt, right. then a flannel, then a jacket. Like that's how they go to school. So even though it's been sunny, it hasn't been like, you know, we are still in winter. Short weather. Though. We are still in winter. Although the other day I did wear shorts. I know. I can't believe it. That's crazy. Well, Make sure that um, you keep your pants nearby because... (laughs) (laughs) Keep your pants on? Keep your pants on because another storm is headed our way and we're set to have showers on Sunday, rain on Monday and Tuesday, and then showers on Wednesday. Nearly four days of wet weather. Are you excited? You better put out that uh, contraption you built for the windows again. Oh my gosh, yes. Because it worked. This is crazy. So um, did anybody else experience water intrusion during the last storm? That storm was nuts. I'm going to reference Forrest Gump again. The the rain was coming every which way. It was like coming up, sideways. I mean, (laughs) geez, Louise. It was so windy that the rain was coming in through our windows on the bottom of the sill on the track and just bubbling up paint. So I had to come up with that contraption to keep the rain out. Oh boy. I hope that doesn't happen again. And I did see a lot of people saying that they had a call to have like water remediation companies come out because they were getting flooded in their house. I did Crazy. have one of the one of the dads from uh, Pico reach out to me to see if I had a roof a roofing guy. Oh, oh, that's the worst. Yeah, they had a leak. Yep. So oh, it's happening. Oh no. Yes. Well, be prepared, everyone. And if you didn't change your windshield wipers yet, now is the time. Check your tires too, right? So you can you be safe out there. We got low tire pressure on one of the car, one of the tires on the Tesla. So Ooh, I do that. we got to get that fixed right away. Well, if you missed our show last week, we had a great show with our special guest from Girl Squad Media and Oh Snaptastic. We learned a lot about what it takes for two women to run multiple successful businesses. So be sure to check out that episode on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. And wasn't that a great show? I it loved was. it. It was so good. It was. I just rewatched it. Mm-hmm. Well, just watched it for the first time. And um, what an incredible love story. Yes. I, I, I didn't realize, because we've only known them for about five, six years. Longer than that. No, like seven. Okay, five, six, seven. It's all the same to me. <laughs> uh, anything over five, it's not more than ten, though. Right. Um, that they've been together as long as we have. I know. What a love story. 27 years. A long time. It's a long time, mm-hmm. you know. So, I, I love I love hearing stuff like that. I know, we know that it's um I, I don't know for us I don't feel like it's super difficult to work together being a couple right and and running a business together. But I know it could be really difficult for a lot of people. Yeah, it could be very challenging. Yeah, and, and they make it look easy. Yes, very seamless for them. So well, we love them so much, and we're super thankful that they came on the show. And brought their great energy, and hopefully we'll have them back on the show again soon. Yeah, it was, it was, you know, I always get them in doses, Uh but that was a bigger dose, and the jersey really came out, right? (laughs) With Shell, with Shell, I I don't usually hear that jersey Mm -hmm. so strong that 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 jersey accent. She was probably really comfortable. I'm sure because it came out. Yes, it did. Well, this past Saturday was the Lunar New Year, so Happy New Year of. The Happy Year of the Dragon. I'm oh, sorry. I, this cold has got me messed up. <laughs> I mean, is that... See, I don't know enough about Lunar New Year to, to know, like, all the different um, animals, like the year of right. whatnot. But if you're born this year, the year of the dragon, that's, pr- that's probably the coolest year you could be born. I think so. If you're born in 88, it's your year also. We are born in 1980. It's the year of the monkey. Makes sense totally makes sense for me anyway (laughs) (laughs) i don't know about you yes okay okay yeah of course i was born the year of the monkey 
<laughs> yes, of course you were. Who's but, ready for the spring? I mean, I'm ready. I am so ready for spring. And, you know, I've been itching to get this garage sale done. Do you think it's actually going to happen? I don't know. I'm, having, I'm starting to have my doubts. What? No, I want to do it, but I just I don't know I don't know if that's actually going to happen. But in spring would be perfect because people want to get out. The rain should hopefully be gone by then. I feel like every weekend that maybe we have some time to do it. It's raining, so we haven't been able to do our garage sale. But I think it's been a long time coming, and I'm ready to purge all that stuff out of the garage. Please, I'm ready. I'm ready. It's already organized, ready to go. Just have to put the little. Price signs on stuff. See, we have all those cool boxes, uh -huh. the containers. My dream is once we get rid of all that stuff, we could put more crap that you have it that you're not going to sell and give away, and put them in those containers. So then we have even more space in the garage. Oh, nice. Is that just is that a pipe dream, or you think that might happen? It's going to happen. Okay, Let's do this. I'm with you. Let's go. Well, um, according to Groundhog, this past February second. Um, we'll be having an early spring. So are you ready for spring real estate season? Yes, <laughs> I am ready for spring real estate season. We'll talk more about real estate a little bit later and what's happening in the market today, right. what our forecast is, what the what's happening with interest rates. All that good stuff is coming up later in the show. Oh, awesome. I'm so excited to hear about it. Well, Sheena is here with us. She says, I'll help you, Corey. Garage sales are fun. Oh, we're taking oh, her Oh, my up gosh, on that. Sheena. Okay. Give me some dates. We're going to put it in the calendar because she is the first one who has offered to do um, some help with a garage sale, and she sounds excited about it. Let's go. I will gladly take her up on that offer. Yeah, she can bring, bring some of her stuff, sell her stuff there too. Yes, she Let's do it. Oh, I'm so excited. Right, See, I'm going to tell the kids they're going to be very excited about it. Then they get to play with the girls. Yeah. Yes. They're, they're no, no, it. they got to work. The kids are working. They'll but play after. After they're done, they get to play with the girls. <laughs> they got to put in their time first. <laughs> well, catching up with the Silvas, we visited Victory Pizza Bar on Main Street. Um, last week to see if it's the right venue for our client appreciation event. And it looks like it may be the place. I'm just waiting on some final details from the owner and to sign off on the contract. But we're super excited about it. The place is really cool inside. Um, I haven't had the opportunity to go there outside of just visiting it. But there's great vibes when you walk in there. And it's an arcade bar. So there's vintage arcade games and pinball machines everywhere. I'm in. In the center of the place, there's a bar. And then they also serve New York-style pizzas there. Oh, yeah. Yes. It's just You're right up our my alley. I feel like all of our clients are going to love it. They're going to have so much fun. And on top of it, the owner is super nice. And I just got good good vibes when I went in there. So I think everybody else will enjoy it too. And we'll have more details about the event once it's fully secured. But um, super excited about that. So you should be hearing more information and details about an invite for the spring, spring client appreciation event. And um, yeah, we're so excited. We're so excited. I mean, it's everything that that I'm that I I loved as a kid. I mean, I still love pizza. Right. Love pizza, New York style pizza. If you've never had it, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Pinball machines and it's it, and you said like '80s style or '90s like video games. Yeah. Arcade games. Yes, they're vintage arcade games. It's called vintage now. I wonder if they have your vintage. I wonder I'm if they vintage. have Double Dragon. I don't know. I still love to playing and, Double Dragon back in the day. We should go check it out one evening um, if we're able to have a little date night and see how it is because kids aren't allowed. It's 21 and over. Oh, I'm so ready for it. Yes, let's go. Let's check it, it out. <laughs> well, our producer wants to know if they have air hockey. No, unfortunately, they do not have air hockey there. That would take up a lot of valuable real estate. Yes, I think so. And then and you can only get two people on there, so. Yeah, all the other ones will be there, fun. It's fun to play. I always have a good time playing it when we go to Scooter's Jungle. Yeah. But it does take up a lot of space. It does. Oh, well. Well, uh, this past week or so, we went and had dinner at Life Thai Fusion with our great friends Chetan and Nervashi. And I love that place. It's so yummy. It was really good. Okay. So Corey's really brave. Uh, she actually asked, when she asked the waitress uh, or the waiter what is good to order, and they tell her, she actually orders it. And you tried something new. You've never had that before, correct? Right. I tried yellow, yellow curry. It was really yummy. 
And now you said you're going to order it next time. That's how much you like. Oh, it? yes. Every single time. That's what I'm getting. That's we're, so good. We're, me, I'm, I'm super simple. I, I want chow mein and I, or pad thai. One of, the, one of those two. And fried rice. That's it. I'm going to get that every single time. Right. So keep it was it simple. Keep it simple. And I'm safe. I know I'm going to enjoy my meal. Well, good. You took a risk and it paid off. It totally paid off. Well, we did get to speak with the owner for quite a bit. And um, unfortunately, she's selling her business because if y'all keep up with STV News, she's had several break-ins there where vandals just come and break the windows thinking they're going to find something in there. I don't know what they're going to take from the restaurant. Clearly, they're not going to leave money in the cash registers overnight. But it's become really costly and taxing on them emotionally because they have to go in and board up the windows each time. And then, you know, I'm sure they lose business for the time that they're trying to get it everything cleaned up. And each time they have to board up the, the door alone, it's $400 just to board it up and then 2900 bucks to replace the door. And so it's just been a lot for them. She's, she's at the point where she's boarding up the doors herself. She kept the board. Cause she's yes. like, it's gonna happen again. It's gonna happen she's again. boarding up the the this this uh, glass door herself. Right. That's terrible. I know. That's horrible for small business owners that they uh, have to experience that. Yes, because you know we see all the the, the snatch and grabs at like Target, right. and, you know, all these department stores. Nobody cares because it's a well, maybe people do care, but it's a corporation. So you're like, ah, they got insurance for that, right? But these small business owners. You know, a thousand dollar deductible. I don't know what a deductible is, right. but whether you're paying a deductible, your insurance is probably going to double. It's right. going to go up, and you know, it really affects a small business owner. And what drives me insane is, you know, our DA, they're not protecting the small business owner. Right. You know, it's going to put a lot of people out of business. And luckily, she was able to find somebody that wanted to buy her business. Yeah. So somebody else came in, and she's staying on. She's actually going to be working there. So she's definitely going to keep that great energy and the delicious food coming. So if you have the opportunity and you want to enjoy some yummy Thai food, go check out Life Thai Fusion. Love that place. It's it's right next to uh, is that uh, Schooner's Jungle or Schooner the Schooner's Jungle Schooner's What's that place right down the street? I don't know. But it's by Chi Chi's. Chi Chi's. Okay. I don't know the name of the place. Oh my goodness. Well, our poor Santino, he had an ear infection and a sinus infection. He had this um, ear that was just bothering him. So I did take him in thinking, you know, I've got to find out what's going on with him. And it turned out that he had this sinus infection. In both ears, he had ear infection. And he's been on the mend and taking his um, antibiotics. But now I think it's, like, happened to me. I feel like I have an ear infection or something. I need to go to the doctor. You've been having that weird cough for, like, a long time now. <laughs> There's just so much the pressure on my season. ears. I feel like I can't hear out of one of them. It's horrible. Oh, my gosh. I don't want to be sick anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel run down. It's just this pressure on my ears that I need to get rid of. It's just too much. But uh, it's okay. Probably need well, to go get some meds. I think so. Well, my mom is here. She said, hi, honeys. Hey, hi, mama. mama. Thanks for joining us. Um well, in the spirit of Valentine's Day and love, I thought it'd be fitting to talk about how we went to Gladys and Ricky's engagement party recently. And wow, they're so cute. Young love. They're engaged. They're going to get married. It's so adorable. I think they're both in their 20s. Yes. If I'm, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, that's, do you remember back in your 20s? I mean, that's a long time ago. Yes. Right? Our 20s. But it felt like so many people were, you know, every other month was like a wedding or an engagement party. Right. And that was the season, right? It was. So it was cool to go to one and look around and I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm now the older person at this You're place. the old guy <laughs> at the engagement party because, you know, that's family. And Chris, yes. his best friend, Joe, that's his younger sister who's getting married. And when we go there, it's just it's like a family reunion, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah, so. Yeah, you know, so Joe, the, the older brother, I've been friends with him since the first or second grade. Uh -huh. It's like over 35 years we've been, you know, like best friends. Yes. It's family, though. It's more like not best friends. It's like family now, you know. It has yes. been for a long time. For sure. Well, um, Chris and I got married when we were 24. So right around the same age that they're getting married. How how is it now? Like, is it too young to get married at 24? Are people waiting a little bit longer? I think what it's too think? young. I mean, we started, we 
I mean, we've been dating since we were 16, right? Right. So we started really young. So we were already together eight years before we got married. Right. You know, it almost felt like it took too long, right, to, to get married. Um, but 24 years old. It's a different time. It's a different time. I don't know. I feel like a lot of, and mistake me, if, you know, correct me if I'm, if I'm mistaken, but I feel like a lot more people now, uh, men and women, but I'd say more so women, it's like, it's, well, I ain't got time to get married. I got to. I have things to do. I got things to do. I want to start my career. Yes. I want to be a homeowner. Right. Like I'm seeing a lot more of this now. Right. Where um, I think it's pushing out the age. I think it's pushing out the age of people getting married. Right. Uh -huh. I think people are getting married in maybe in their late 20s, but 30s, 40s even for right. the first time getting married. I'm starting to see that a lot more now. Yeah. I mean, everybody has their timing. Right. I don't think society should put that pressure on people like when is the right time to get married you know, none of your business do you get married <laughs> yes, when you want to yeah <laughs> get married when you want to get married i'm just saying i'm seeing it a lot more right. people are waiting a lot longer to get married yeah i think it's a sign of the times things have changed well um this past weekend actually friday we celebrated international night at santino and nola's school and both kids were handed passports when we walked into the event which is so cute they get these passports. They get to walk around in the NPR and learn about different countries and cultures. And um, there's so many different cultures. It's so diverse at our school, which we absolutely love. And in their passport, they get it stamped at each station once they learn the language that's spoken there, what continent the country is located in, and something interesting about the culture. And then they get to draw a little something on their passport. And I love that our school gets the kids so involved. It's not even just a school. That's put on by the PTA, that event. The and parents our parents are, are so amazing to put something like that together for kids. No one's getting paid to do something like that. And the turnout was amazing. It was like barely any standing room in that NPR. It was packed in there. It was packed. And there was kids playing outside. And a, the kids were outside playing. And it was still packed. So um, Corey gave you one part of it. Yes. So that that was great because not only at each station, which is a different country, a lot of them had food that you could try to. There was food everywhere. F everybody had food. And I know if people get grossed out by COVID. I get it. But um, right. but there was food everywhere. Maybe that's where I got reignited. Or maybe that's where you <laughs> passed your germs off to like a bunch no, of people. No, I didn't people. feel sick when I went there. <laughs> I think it was after that day I got a little sick. It's probably because I ate some of the food. Probably. Oh, well. So, But was there, was also, there was also a bunch of performances on stage. Yes. So, you know, we had people um, singing and dancing and it was based on their culture, though. It wasn't like a um, a talent show. No. This was, like, based on their culture. They were culture. all cultural performances. There was kids playing instruments. And they were all well-produced. They were all kids up there. The parents put the time in. The kids put the time in. And it was just so amazing and so beautiful. Can I share with you my favorite performance? Yes. There was a lot of good ones. Right. Okay, so I'm not um, saying any of the other ones were not as good. Right. But my favorite was uh, there was two kids, uh -huh. and they were Mongolian, uh -huh. and it was a Mongolian sheep herders dance or something like that. Yes, it was awesome. It was indigenous. It was it, beautiful. They looked they looked native. To, well, they're native to their land, but they looked native like American, you know. Uh -huh. But but they were Mongolian, and and the dance was beautiful. And I bet you. Not too many people know that dance. You have to be in that culture to know it. Right. There's probably less than one percent of people that know that. I've never seen anything like that. It was amazing. I talked to the parents after the actually the mom and the grandma. The grandma didn't know English, so I talked to the mom. And those girls, it's a set of sisters. They go and they um, dance all over the place. So they have get-togethers of other. Uh, it, in my mind, I kind of imagine it being similar to like a maybe a powwow where um, traditional dancers get together and showcase, you know, what they've been practicing. And she said, yeah, we go all over the place. She said, mostly we go to K-Town. So it was really amazing to see these cultures get up there and dance. And the kids taking so much pride in their traditions. I just loved it. It was so beautiful. I loved every single one of them. The the Korean dancing was awesome. There was so much color, and the girls had these traditional um, dresses, and everything was pink and beautiful. And then, of course, we had Santito's 
best friend Mason, he got up there and he was dancing. It was and like K-pop. He did a K-pop performance. So it was great. We had so much fun. I didn't want it to end. I didn't get a chance to post about it because I have been under the weather. But I am going to put a reel together so I could share it with everyone because it was so beautiful. I have some good content I got to share with you so you can put it on the reel. Yes. We had a wonderful time that night. It was so much fun. And every year we're looking forward to it. So if anyone is like looking for an amazing school to go to and you love things like that, really look into Pico and living in Stevenson Ranch because there are some amazing things going on at our school always. So Yes. I mean, Santa Cruz is great for schools anyway. Right. You know, uh, but, yeah, Stevenson Ranch, love, love, love Pico Elementary. Yes, yes. Well, um, this past weekend, Nola and I went to go get our hair cut, which was fun. And we had a little special mommy-daughter date. And we got to go see our girl, Syl, who we absolutely love. So thank you, Syl, for hooking it up and always working your magic on our hair. I just love her. And we have a, a date coming up with Syl and Jason. So Syl uh, does everything hair, correct? Yes. She has her own studio out of her home. So she's got like a wash bowl and a cutting station, everything. It's just so nice to go see her and feel like, get that spa experience. And then you don't actually have to go into a spa where there's all these people. You kind of get your own like one-on-one time with her. Right, so everybody take take a look at Corey's hair. If you're loving it and you want to hook up with Syl and have <laughs> Syl do your hair, Reach out to Corey. She'll connect you guys. I love her so much. She's the best. And then Nola has a good time, too. <laughs> she loves to be pampered. Yes, she does. You should have seen her when she's getting her hair washed. She's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> the one mistake I made is not bringing something to keep her entertained. Because when I was getting my hair done, she was like, oh. I have your phone. Your phone's going to die. And then there's no reception there, and probably. Then, so. No, she was on there, but I didn't think to bring a book or an iPad or a coloring book for her. So next time I have to remind myself. And then she was getting hangry, so it was time Ooh, to go. Oh, don't mess with the silver when we're hangry. Uh, it was time to go. So I rewarded her with some in and out because she loves in and out <laughs> We had a great time. Um, we were talking a little bit earlier about when is it too early to get married, and my mom chimed in. She said, gee, I was 20 and dad was 26 when they got married. Yeah, I mean, for that time. That was I, normal. I that I was think, like the norm. I think that was norm. But yeah. they started dating earlier, too. I think she was 20. mom was like 15, wasn't she? She wasn't even 21 when she got married. Wow. She couldn't even buy liquor <laughs> at that age, right? That's crazy. They're, man, their, their wedding picture is awesome. It like is. How, you know, the, the, how they used to dress back then, right? Yes. And it's funny because now we fast forward to today. We're talking about like their wedding stuff. Santino refers to everything that we did when we were, you know, a couple years ago. Oh, that was like in the olden days, right? In the olden days. That's what he said the other day. <laughs> I wonder what he's going to think about Grandma and Papa with their with their wedding pictures. Oh, my gosh. I know. And, and their wedding pictures are in black and white, aren't they? Um, like the ones that were on the wall? No, they weren't black and white. There was color back then for No, them. I know there was color, but I'm saying the ones that they have. Don't they have some black and white photos too? No, they That's don't. like a thing. I think we have some too. No, we did that. Oh, my goodness. Well, Tanya, Tanya said she was 20 when she got married. Wow, you're young. Youngin. Okay, so her daughter is 16, mm -hmm. our niece. So four, can you imagine her getting married four years from now? No way. Heck no. No way. But, you know, back back when you're at that age, you think you know everything, right? Uh-huh. It's true. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, I think it's too young. <laughs> I think 20 is way too young to get married. Oh, and my mom said she only has color photos. Thank you very much. We have black and white photos, don't we? Well, for no. Ours are all in color, but, like, for e effects, I changed it to, like, a sepia color. That's just what I mean. To I don't, frame. Not don't, because it was only in black and white. I That's I know. But I didn't you're mean dating that. her by saying that. Speaking of black and white photos, so there was a photo um, that we received from Ava, the cutest little Girl Scout ever. She delivered um, cookies to us. Well, her mom delivered cookies to us. And I was so excited because when I opened up the bag, there's this cute Girl Scout picture of Ava. And so I put it on my on the refrigerator. And the other day, Santino comes up to Chris and says, Oh, is that a picture of mom when she was a Girl Scout? Yeah, she, he thought it was you. He thought it was me. And then Chris is like, no, no, that's our friend Ava. And he goes, 
I was going to say, that's right. It should have been black and white if it was mom. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> that kid thinks I'm ancient. He thinks we're really old. It's it's so funny. It is so funny. Yeah. In the olden days, back when you were a Girl the Scout. The olden days when I was a Girl Scout. I love being a Girl Scout. It's the best. <laughs> Thank you. Huge shout out to all the little girls who have delivered the cookies that we ordered from them. They are so delicious. And you know what? I don't even care about the cookies. I, I know they're yummy. I actually haven't had one yet. We have so many boxes. We have 12 boxes of cookies. Um, I just love seeing them show up on our doorstep to deliver them. It is the cutest thing ever. Now, oh, my gosh. And for the ones who haven't showed up because their moms are living very busy lives and juggling everything and taking care of the deliveries for their girls while they're at school, they are so adorable. To include a picture in there or to send me a message, I love that. I got a little message from Leanne, and she's so cute. She had COVID, so she couldn't deliver it, but... These little girls are adorable, and I hope they all reach their goals. I'm always rooting for the Girl Scouts. I'm really surprised. If I'm, I'm just now thinking of it. It's not, I've never brought this up before. That you haven't pushed harder for Nola to become a Girl Scout. I've asked her, especially she, since you're an OG Girl Scout. I mean, I've yourself. asked her, "Do you want to be a Girl Scout?" And she's told me no. Yeah, but you ask kids stuff; they're always going to say no. Okay, listen. I'm being, just saying, being a Girl Scout mom. Is a huge commitment. Also, you could do it. You could do it. <laughs> Why don't you make Santino become a Boy Scout? Then, because I wasn't a Boy Scout. Okay, that's fine. I have no fond memories of me being a Boy Scout when I was a kid. That's fine. Like you have when of you she's being a ready, Girl Scout when she you were can young. be a Girl Scout. But for now, she doesn't want to, and I'm okay with that. I don't need to push her to do something I did. Like you know those one moms who are like living vicariously through their daughters and pushing them to do something that they wish they would have done or that they did. No, that's not me. I, she's her own individual person. She, she probably would be, excel at like doing some type of art thing. Okay. She's going to focus on what she wants to do. I was just do. curious. So, so Sheena says she was 28 when she got married. Her husband, Zeph was 24. Poor guy. Oh, that's a whole other story. And she's laughing. <laughs> laughing, laughing, crying face, right? I thought it was late to get married, but now I'm so thankful. I feel like it was a perfect age. It was. I feel like 28 is a perfect age to get married. It is. Because you've already learned about yourself, right? right. You kind of know where you're going. You're very mature at that age. I don't know, 24, Zeph's pretty mature because 24 to get married as a as a young man. A lot of, I don't think a lot of like a lot of guys would do that nowadays. Twenty four years old, getting married. You got married at twenty five. Yeah, but I was an overachiever. Actually, were you twenty five? I think I was twenty four. You were twenty four, also. Right. Yeah. Oh. Ish. <laughs> yeah. So, wow. Okay. We're, we're going to start seeing. I know one of our friends, one one of your really good friends from high school. She just got engaged, right? Yes. And she's in her forties. Yep. And I think that's starting to be, like I said. The, like more of the norm now too right you don't have so to settle cool. yep don't settle. it all happens it all happens the right time for you yep that's for sure well this past weekend chris showed homes to a new client and he wrote an offer and is now in a multiple counter situation everybody who's out there considering buying guess what the multiple counters are back with multiple <sighs> offers so they only left for like a couple weeks in december right uh-huh uh, yeah, it's it's back. I found out right before the show we did not get our offer accepted. Oh, darn. it's totally fine, and I'm gonna tell you why. Okay, listen, some buyers are gonna be willing to do more than you are, it, right. and it doesn't always come down to price. What scared me about this property, just with our experience, and this is really why anybody that's looking to buy a place, and you have a friend that's a realtor. But that's all they are. That's the only qualification to being your realtor is being your friend or family right. member. You're really doing yourself a disservice if, if that's their only qualification. So the this house, the lady, her husband passed away. She's an older lady. She has a lot of stuff in the house. Uh -huh. Totally fine. But she had a renter living in one of the one of her spare bedrooms. Okay. That's a huge red flag for me. Yeah, what agent. if the renter doesn't want to get out? Yes. And she doesn't have a formal lease or anything like that because I picked, you know, I asked her all the questions. Of course, this is that's why, your job. This is why as, this is a, what you do. as a listing agent, never leave your seller at the property during showings because you'll have an agent like me that's going to 
ask her all the questions the right way. Right. She didn't get offended by it. I asked her all the questions and I was like, oh yeah. So in the contract I wrote in our offer that the tenant had to be out of the property five days prior to the, to the close of escrow. Smart. You're protecting your buyers. From six months of somebody squatting in the house, right? Like it could yes. be very expensive. Yes. It could destroy the property. There's a lot of things that can go sideways. Absolutely. Do and you think anyone's going to think about that if they've never been in that type of situation? No. I don't or if think they're so. even asking the seller, how would you not know this stuff? Right. Unless well, you were asking. And if you if you go to look at that property and it's vacant, I mean, not vacant. If nobody's there when, when you're looking at the property, there's no way for you to know that there, there's a renter living there. Right. So I found out that one of the reasons why we didn't get our offer accepted is because I wrote that verbiage in the contract and that the other buyer is okay with buying the property and closing escrow with that tenant in the property. Oh, they're out their minds. Yeah. Well, you want a roommate? No. Yeah, I I, I uh -uh. find it hard to believe that that other agent let the buyer know what was going on. And I don't think that's going to work out. I think they're going to come back to us. But uh, I, we always have to look out for our clients. And sometimes that's even them not getting an offer accepted because we had to protect them from themselves maybe even, you know? Wow. So the seller chose the other offer because of that verbiage. That's a huge red flag. Huge red flag. You know, like, oh, that's going to be your problem, new new buyer. I'm sure the other buyer didn't even write that verbiage in their contract because they had no clue that there's a tenant well, there's, in there. There's a form. There's another form to put in the offer, which obviously I put in. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm sure they didn't do it, but you, you got to look out for your clients. I mean, it's there's so, much, so many things that could go wrong in an right. escrow. And, you know, a lot of our clients watch our show, and they probably don't know what we're talking about because these things don't go wrong in our escrows because right. we look out for them and we see stuff coming before it comes. Right. You know what I mean? We know what to look out for. So anyhow, I'm glad we didn't get our offer accepted if, if it came with a tenant. It's if anything, they dodged a bullet. Yes. We'll find them in the right house. For sure. Well, Julia is here with us. Hi, Julia. Thanks for joining us. She says, you guys are such great agents. Thank you, Thank so, you much. so much. We appreciate that. Well, Saturday's dinner was canceled. Wah. Too many people were not feeling well, so we canceled it. That was sad. I miss family, but I'm not going to lie. We needed a rest. We needed a rest. <laughs> it, I it, was not going to be performing well in the kitchen if I had to cook for so many people. Just, I mean, even the kids are getting over it. Santino got over his cold yes. and you're catching it. I caught it. And even uh, our sister was sick. She was there too. She was so not feeling well. Not feeling well. Poor thing. Well, uh, Sunday was a Super Bowl. It feels like that was so long ago. <laughs> Doesn't it? Yes. Well, Chris stayed home to watch the game. He did get invited to go to Joe's house, but you know, Sometimes you just want to sit and chill in your own home, right? So I'm such a homebody. I'm such a homebody. I love to get out, see my friends. But something like the Super Bowl, it's weird because when we were younger, I used to love hosting Super Bowl parties, right. right? Or going to somebody's house. Yeah. But now at the ripe age of 43 years old. <laughs> ripe. <laughs> look, I didn't have any special snacks. There was no liquor. It sounds like a very vanilla Super Bowl. Right. I was so happy. <laughs> I was so happy to be in my recliner. That in front recliner of my is so cozy. It, that recliner has brought, brought me so much joy. It just hugs you. I Every was, time you sit in it, you're like you're getting a recliner years, hug. How many years did I go without a, a recliner? I asked for it. I wanted it for so many years. Right. I found the perfect one. No, it was like probably 15 years or something that I didn't have a recliner. Right. I, I, my life is complete now. <laughs> I was just so happy sitting there front of the TV. I got to watch the game uninterrupted. Right. And I'm not going to get into the, the the game itself, but what I will get into is, what did you think about that halftime show? That halftime show, that's all I watched. I mean, actually, no, I did watch the commercials the too. No, I did watch some of the game, but the halftime show got me pumped. <laughs> not going to lie, when it first started, I, I wasn't in front of the TV. I was coming down the stairs, so all I could hear was the audio, and I was like, ooh, what happened to Usher? Why is he out of breath? Why does his voice sound like that? And then I came downstairs and I realized something's up with his mic. Something's going on with his mic because their audio was all messed up. I'm like, did they not 
test this out ahead of time. But you know what? They worked out the kinks. They gave him a regular mic. And wow, that halftime show. I know there was a lot of haters out there saying they didn't like it. But there were even more people who are in our demographic who were feeling it. It was so good. I was like dancing and singing. The kids are looking at me like, but the kids do know some of the music because that's what we play in our house. So yes. yes, Usher's come rolling out in his roller skates. I was like, yes, I love this. It was so, so good. So it did start off rocky. Right. I don't think it was Usher's fault that I don't it started think off so rocky. Either. I mean, you can't take stuff away from that guy. Do you see his performance? He's dancing the whole damn time. show. The yes. whole time. And then, you know, we got a little distracted by some of his special guests. And well, here's what I mean by this. Which one? Well, he had a, uh, you know, little Jermaine Dupri came out. Oh, with his little ruffle socks. socks. Yeah, he came out <laughs> for a little bit. Alicia Keys, we're going to talk about that a little bit too. Because what? What was wrong with her? She's nothing amazing. was wrong with her. What I'm saying is, is he's so, such a great entertainer. For the hot second that you're looking at the special guest, right? He's having a wardrobe change, oh, putting his skates yes. on, putting on what, whatever new outfit he had on, right? Oh, and I loved how like when he took off his beautiful like sequenced white top that I would have totally rocked. It had like a little brooch on the side. I was like, I love that top he has on. Next thing you know, he's taking it off. I was like, Oh, Usher, okay. And then you know, all the ladies were grabbing their pearls, like, Oh. Oh, Usher. <laughs> Usher, oh my goodness. And then he ripped off his tank top. I was like, wow. And I look over at Santino and he just dug his head into the couch because he was so embarrassed that Usher was topless. He still, yeah, he still gets a little embarrassed by topless. And I was like, though. Santino, what's going on? Are you embarrassed by that? And Nola's like, no, it's good. It's good. You know, just watch it. She just stayed <laughs> Oh my it. gosh. She knows a good performer when she sees it. I know Tamika was loving it too. She said, "Yes, it was good." Your mama liked it too. And my mom said, "I really like." I know she did. She loves Usher, and I know Dad does too because my dad loves Usher. He's always bumping that song, yeah, and he loves Alicia Keys too. He'll listen to Alicia Keys. I I made a comment like, "Oh, I know my so, dad is loving this show right now." So, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm not gonna. I promise, I'm not gonna deviate too much. Right. So, right around this time, it's love season. Every year we watch like our wedding video. Right. And in the wedding video, we could find your dad dancing to yeah. down to Usher. Talk about, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, He's I should it, pull right? it out and we, just post it. We gotta post it. So good. We gotta post He's it. He's actually dancing with uh with Jenny McAvoy. Well, her maiden name is Machiavella, Jenny Hernandez. She's dancing with him, and she's getting down on the dance floor to that song with my dad. Wait, and I John's love it. with us too? Wait, Jonathan's here. Hey, What's Jonathan. What's up, John and Tamika? Oh, I miss y'all. Look, it's got, we got a little family affair going on right now. She's, he said the skates was a moment. It was. I'm getting my skates out. But, now right, that so, I've been working out, let me tell you, I'm not afraid of falling anymore. I'm going to get out the skates. The one time I got on skates, <laughs> that video has been submitted to America's Funniest Videos. <laughs> they haven't me, called us back They yet. haven't called us back of me eating it. Right. Uh, so I saw funny, all the funny uh, memes and reels and all that stuff come out, right? Right. Because the internet never loses. Right. Right. So they found a way to make fun of Usher on skates. No. Yes. So I don't know if it's more Usher. It was more his outfit that he had on. And then Luda had on like, you know, they had like the shoulder pads on. Right. And they did a, a side to side picture of Usher and and you know and Luda in their outfit, and then the um, the guys from the dodgeball movie, what what's his name, Ben Stiller, uh -huh. and when he has his dodgeball team, they got a side by side, and it looks pretty identical. Oh my gosh, no, it's amazing. Oh, no, it's I amazing. See this, you gotta look, look it up. Everyone's always trying to hate on on something that's amazing. <laughs> it was such a good show. So let's see. Let's go back. We're going to scroll through all these comments. We've got a lot of comments right now. So Tamika said, little JD, laugh out loud. What was up yes. with those socks, though? He had the, the ruffles. I don't know what he was doing there. He was rocking them. No, that's but like, his I didn't, style. I didn't understand. No, no, no. It, it, it didn't go with the performance or what was going on. Like I didn't he's understand what own, he had going he's on. He's his own entity. You you just let Jermaine Dupri do whatever he wants. Okay. Just let him do him. Um, Sheena said, yes, Nola. It was all good. <laughs> it was all good. <laughs> and Tamika said, Pops knows that's what's up. Yeah. Yep, mm -hmm. yep. Talk about your dad. Yes, he does. And then Julia said, they were great. And jo Jonathan said, hello. Yes, it was such a good halftime show. And then her came out. 
And I, and I looked over, I go, oh, look at her. And then Tino said, well, what's her name? I go, her. And he goes, wait, what? It was this on who's on first. Yeah. He was, like, he was he was so confused that her name was her. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, that's real original. I was like, Tino. He's always got a comment. She's got a real name. That's her stage name. Oh, now the, I get the it. The thing about her, she's such a great performer. We were lucky enough to see her live yes. at the Hollywood Bowl that people don't even think about how great she is on the guitar. Yes. She was so getting talented. down. She was getting down on the guitar. So talented. Well, I follow her on social media, and she said, there's no Usher without her. I was ah, like, yeah, you're right. You sure are right. It was so good. And then Ludacris came out with his big old shoes. <laughs> and his big old hair. <laughs> his big old hair. And then um, Lil Wayne came out, right? Did he come out? Did I miss that? No, wait. Was it him? No, I didn't see him in there. Uh, Maybe he did. I don't know. I might have missed it. Oh, no, not Lil Wayne. Um, What's his name? The other guy. Sorry. Okay. Drawing a blank. Maybe maybe people could help us out. Yes. Well, Soul said, hi, guys. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. It was Day. a great halftime show, and I think it just got me so amped up for Lovers and Friends, the festival we are going to with our friends. We and haven't been to a music festival in a long time. Wow. We were on the group chat. All of us were texting each other like, wow, this is a preview of what's going to happen in Vegas when we go to that festival it's gonna be so amazing we're so excited <laughs> it's gonna be well because everybody that was there is gonna be at lovers and friends yes pretty much pretty much with more There'll with be more. way more yes. with way more i cannot wait it's basically gonna be like we're in high school all over again i know it's gonna be so I'm much excited. fun okay so i confused myself as little john little john was on there yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> I messed up. Sorry. Little John. I got that make, that's way different than Little Wayne. I'm I know. I was one of those little guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. So how many fans do you think the NFL and Chiefs gain um, by exploiting Taylor Swift? What Did you put that out there? I put that out there. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's did genius. Did you hear about her getting kicked out? Wait, what? Oh, I didn't hear about all this. Go ahead. Okay, so I think it's genius. Everybody's all mad about this Taylor Swift getting all this airtime on the NFL, but it's genius. They've been trying to get women to watch football forever. Do you know how many people I've seen with the shirts that says, let's go Taylor's boyfriend, and all their shirts are, I think it's all the ladies are wearing this I think stuff. it's great. Yes. I think it's great for the NFL. I, it's, it's not, I mean, it's unfortunate that all these women are becoming Chiefs fans because I'm a Raider fan. You know right. that. But uh, I think it's great. I think it's it's great marketing. It, it They got really lucky that this happened. But am I the only one that doesn't see that connection, that love connection? Taylor Swift to Travis Kelsey? It just doesn't make sense to me. I mean, I don't know anything about him. And I listen to her music. And that's it. I, I don't look into it. And I don't really care. Well, I don't care either. But right. you know, this was a topic that came up. Right. And Travis Kelsey, to me, is like he's more hip hop. He's not pop. You know what I mean? Like, right. I, I just, I don't know. I don't see it. But, you know, hopefully it works out. Hopefully they have a, a bunch of little uh, little babies. Maybe. <laughs> little Chiefs fans. Oh, maybe. Well, did you hear about Taylor Swift getting Kanye kicked out? I didn't hear about that. I'm just reading this right now. So I don't know if that's accurate or not, but it was a news story that she got uh, Kanye kicked no, out of the Super Bowl. Yeah. come on. And he got kicked out of the suite. And those suites are pricey. Wait, she got him kicked out or did he get himself kicked out? Because I wouldn't be surprised if Yeezy did something like that. He's always do, or is it Yee now? I don't know what his name is. His name's is. not Kanye. His name is Yee. I don't know what his name is. <laughs> but those those suites were expensive. They're like a couple million dollars they just don't for care. a suite. That's like twenty dollars for them. Exactly. They don't now, care. Before we get off this topic of the Super Bowl, what about the commercials though? Yes. So what They're was your funny. favorite what was your favorite commercial? I didn't see all the commercials, but I did like the one with J Lo and her dude. What's his name? Oh, Ben Affleck. <laughs> J Lo and her dude. Ben Affleck is <laughs> Probably just as rich as JLo is. Who cares about richness? I mean, <laughs> I'm just won, saying, I'm being funny. I know. I think his he's name. won an Oscar before, too. He was I pretty funny. Wrong. I that, know who Ben Affleck is. That I just was being silly. My favorite commercial. The that one was funny. It was hilarious. So, him, and his, his best friend, friend, Matt Damon, his, his, his friend, <laughs> JLo's, JLo's dude's friend, <laughs> Matt Damon, JLo's dude's bestie. Right. And then they had Tom Brady in it, too. Yeah, it was pretty funny. It was. Hilarious, and then there's like extra parts of that commercial that you can go online and and find. Right. It's it was so funny that one, and the other commercial that I only saw it once was business in the front, party in the back. Oh, the mullet thing. 
it was the mullet thing. It was but like who, a, what was what was it for? It was for some kind of like little go kart. I don't know, Kawasaki or something. A go kart, really? It's some kind of like ATV off roading thing. I don't oh, know. Oh, okay. But I thought that was pretty clever. And then they had a Michael Sarah like um, Sarah. That was not funny. It was funny. I thought it was funny because if if you know that actor, he has that kind of strange humor. So I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Tamika said she loved that one. She's talking about the J Lo and her boyfriend. Oh my gosh. Not boyfriend, her husband. <laughs> They're married. <laughs> her side piece. That's not her side piece. But not she, anymore. No. She put a ring on it. She put her she put her <laughs> see? That's what I'm saying. Everyone's thinking that. Well, um, after the halftime show, I um, took the kids to go to Bethy's house because they wanted to play with their little bestie so bad. And she invited us last minute to go by and check it out. So we did go over to her place. And uh, that was fun because, you know, um, Kaisi, he's a huge Chiefs fan. He's a huge Chiefs fan. And he loves Mahomes. Is that his name? This is what happens. You know, this is why NFL teams, any team, wants to win the championship, right? Because they get all these new fans that end up being lifelong fans. And he's, I guess he's been a fan for a minute. Since they, because they've won three, that's their third Super Bowl. Oh, in a row? No, they've, that's their second in a row. Oh, maybe that's why. Because he got into football. And they won like four years ago. He plays flag football and his older cousin plays football in high school. So that's um, what happens. That's his team. So he was having so much fun and screaming at the TV. And it was cool to see him interacting with that. And Santino, he could care less. He was just sitting there in the lane. They were playing a pass while they were watching the game. Catch, you mean? Passing the ball, catch, whatever. (laughs) (laughs) They were playing pass. With this, like, this weird oval-shaped thing. (laughs) The sphere. (laughs) I guess you weren't watching the game, either. (laughs) Listen, I told you, I'm trying to get over whatever I've got going on in this head cold. (laughs) Leave me alone. (laughs) But we had a good time over there. They were having fun. And Nola went swimming. It was cold out. She went in a jacuzzi. Was it heated? Yeah, she was in the jacuzzi, and then she jumped in the pool. Well, didn't jump it. She went in the pool a little bit to get some... Dive toys. She was probably doing all kind of crazy dives and cannonballs. She was like, actually. She walked in. No, actually, uh, Chris did tell her, please be careful when you go over there. I don't need you breaking your neck and doing a gymnastics type of things when you go over. Because, you know, Zaya does gymnastics. Well, she has one of those bars in their room with a pad underneath it for swinging on. And I was like, can I go on there, please, mommy? I go ahead. I was like, be careful, please. Don't hurt yourself. So the problem with Nola... <laughs> Is she's like her dad, and if I see something like oh, I could do that probably, but but you can't, right? This so Zaya, she goes to gymnastics. She's been going to gymnastics. She's practicing time and hours to do a headstand, right? right. So Nola thinks she could just go do it. Oh, well, Nola's first like time trying, trying to do it. a headstand on our floor, our hard flooring at home. Yeah, she's nuts. I'm like, no, so girl. I'm gonna do a headstand right now. Oh, why why can't I do it? I was doing it at Zaya's. It's like, no. Oh boy. <laughs> Please don't oh, break your boy. neck. <laughs> so even with her going swimming, you guys doing all that, still got the family challenge in. Yes, we did it ahead of time. So, so for, we've been going strong with this. With so the can you tell everybody what this, what this daily 50 is so that we we've do been doing? So we do this daily 50, and every day for 50 days, we're doing 50 lunges. We're doing 50 push-ups, 50 squats, 50-second planks, and 50-second wall sits. Wall sit. Yes. And the whole family's been involved. Everybody. Yes. Yeah, and even, like, my brother, my sister, right? We got, we got multiple people doing it. The and house Sheena, family, Sheena, and they, they hit and their the halfway point. the whole family has been doing it as well. And we are on day 28 is today. 28 will We've be today. We've completed 27 days, so we're a little over halfway there. And... um yeah, we've just been keeping up with it. And there's days where we don't want to do it. Oh, my gosh. We're tired. We Dead still tired. push through it. Don't want to do it. It's like 15 minutes. It's about 15 minutes. Or 15 less. minutes out of your day to do something so like it. that is so worth it. And we're all becoming a lot stronger. So one of the things that happened for me is, you know, a couple of years ago, I, I tore my ACL, MCL, the slight tear in my knee. Never went to the doctor for it. Later I did, but it was already too late. I already had been dealing with it for like six months. So I never had surgery or anything like that. And so my knee's 
just weaker, my right knee. But because we've been doing these lunges, the squats, and and then the wall sit, yes, it has strengthened my knee where it doesn't bother me anymore. I'm still really careful about it in jujitsu, right? But it it doesn't really bother me like it used to anymore. It's not like aching the whole time. And You're this building is just, up strength. Yeah, and it's just from doing this daily fifty. Yes, so yeah. we're all seeing. Some positive results from it. Absolutely. Yes, we love it. And then I've been going to Orange Theory. I'm still doing my transformation challenge. I am on week four. So I'm almost halfway done with that challenge because it's eight-week challenge. Am I on week four? I don't know, girl. I'm not keeping track for you. Oh, my goodness. I think I'm on, on week four. I'm almost done. I'm you, almost halfway done. You've been rocking it. Thank you. I mean, you. you've been working out like five, six days a week. Well, every day because we're doing the daily 50. Yes. But you've been doing Orange Theory like three days a week. We did yoga the other day. We haven't done that in a long time. Yes, we took a yoga class. Was, that was nice. It was a restorative class, which I really needed. I think that's all I want to do, restorative <laughs> yoga. Yeah. I, I don't want to do sculpt and flow. I don't want, I don't want weights in yoga, especially because it's all heated in there. The room is really hot. It's like over 100 degrees in the there. The last time I took a sculpt and flow class, the first and only time I took one, I ended up getting an injury doing it. it and I was like, I can't fun. have this mess up my Orange Theory goals. So I need to just take it easy, do some restorative stuff. And um, I'm also looking into just buying in bulk some classes from the Pilates place because I love going there. It always made me feel really good. So I am doing well. And, I mean, changing the way I eat has been huge. It's small changes, too. It's not So I think when you do these, these crazy changes to your diet it's hard and, and you to go on these it. fad diets, it's really hard to keep up with that. Right. But we we've done small things like I love chips. Right. I love eating sandwiches and having chips. That's it's my go to like once a day. And I really cut that out. I still have sandwiches every now and then, but now I slice up apples really thin. And he convinces himself. I lie chips. to myself and say that I'm eating chips because they're crunchy and you know they're crisp. And that's what I eat for chips now. I had to had to fool my mind <coughs> and, and start eating eating uh, sl- apple slices. Chris is doing the dang thing. And I've cut out a lot of the bread. I don't do sandwiches anymore. As much as how easy it is just to make a sandwich. Nope, I can't do that. And I've been making really colorful, unprocessed things. Oh, my gosh. You know one of my so favorite delicious. things that you've been making that I yes. love? And I didn't know that I love it so much. What? The tzatziki. Oh, yes. I've been making it from scratch. And I need to post pictures of what I've been making because it's so beautiful. It's so delicious. <laughs> the kids love it, too. Yes. And oh, it's just so good. And having something like that, something really light to, to you know go to bed uh-huh. for dinner, all about it. And every single day, I feel like we have acai bowls. Oh, yes. These kids are so spoiled. We're all spoiled to have an acai bowl every day. It's those so little delicious. things in life, like the, that, those little things make me happy in life. Me too. Well, Marina is here with us. Hi, Marina. Thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate you. She said, I'll do a daily 15 of taco eating and walk into the mailbox, but you rock it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, tacos are good. I'm down for a 15 day uh, taco challenge, Marina. Oh, if you my wanna. goodness. <laughs> that sounds so good. Thanks for popping in and saying hello. I so. know. She's so great. She always pops in and makes comments on our reels. Yes. But this is the first time we get to interact with her on the show, live on the show. Yes, I love that. Oh, my goodness. She's got me hungry now. It's so she, so she's, she's, she's a big cook and a baker. And I, I want to start. I need to start seeing some of her stuff that, she, that she's making. She needs yes. to post a little, some, of the, some of her creations on. I online. would love to see that. Share some recipes. Delicious. Yummy. Well, switching things up to real estate. Big congrats. So big congrats to you over here. Woo. So big shout out. And, and you know, I've told this story many times, but I got to tell it again real quick. The last time Corey delivered keys to a buyer was two days before she went, or the day before she went into labor with Santino. Yeah. Now, I was the day in of, labor. You were in labor. With Santino. And Santino was nine. It's a long time not to, not to really work with clients. Right. And you decided to help your bestie out. And yes. what happened? You sold her a house. Yeah, you found the house. Like we found the the house, house that she's her. gonna. It's her forever home. It's her forever home. It's beautiful, and I'm just so excited for her and her beautiful family. They have a place to call their own and to make their own. It's an amazing house. It's in a great community. It's a community that's this hidden gem in Santa Clarita and Circle J Ranch. It's gated. 
And when you just drive in there, the first time I drove in that community, it was during the holidays. And it just felt like a different place. It felt like magic when we drove in there. And um, this house came on the market. And, you know, they hadn't really looked in that area. I know they had seen one other house there in the the years that they had been looking because it's been a, a while that they've been trying to find their perfect home. And sometimes it takes longer than other times. And that's fine because we're here to help our clients and we want them to f- find that perfect place for their family. Sure. And her husband said, you know, I really like this place. And she, she's like, you know, he wants to live there. And we kind of switched things up from where they originally looking and just focused primarily on here. And this house came on the market and it was overpriced. I thought, well, was it? I don't I mean, know. I thought it might have been a little overpriced, but I don't, it wasn't grossly overpriced. It just was a slower time of the year. Right. It came on in December. I mean, I looked at the price per square foot and I said it may be a little overpriced. Sure. And it was higher than they wanted to go. And I said, you know what? It's December. People don't put their houses on the market in December expecting it to go quick. Or, if, or maybe they're in a situation where they need to sell fast. I'm like, I think we should keep an eye on this one. I'm like, actually, let's go look at it. Because if it sits on the market for a while, you already know what it looks like. And if you like it, we should put an offer if it sits for a while. So we go and we take a look at it, and they liked it. And I said, you know, you should just write an offer now. Let's not wait. Write an offer on what you're comfortable with. And they wrote an offer way under asking. Way under. Way under. So- and I normally I shy away from doing stuff like that where it's way under because I don't want to offend seller, agent, whatever. But in this well, and case... Then ruin, and then ruin your and shot of getting and doing any business with them. Because right. if you offend a seller with an offer, even if you come back and give them what they want later, they might not want to work with you because they were right. so offended by that original offer. And so when I presented this offer, I said, look, we're not trying to offend anyone, but there's no other comps that have sold that justify this price. Nothing barely ever comes up in that market, in that particular community. And so, you know, we did some negotiating and and at the end of the day, they got their offer accepted a hundred grand under asking. We negotiated one hundred thousand dollars under ask price. Yes. Amazing. Amazing. So excited for them. And not only that, they ne- we negotiated pieces of furniture to be included with the sale. This house has an amazing view. It's just such a good feeling. And the sellers were the original owners. When do you come across that? A house that was built in 1988, original owners, you know they put a lot of love into that house. And I'm a big believer in, you know, feelings and houses when you walk in. Some people might think I'm a little crazy, but when I get, like, good vibes and you walk in, you could just feel the love. I, there's something to be said about that. Absolutely. As opposed to a house that maybe. You know, it's a flip or, you know, there's tenants in there or sometimes you walk in and there's just weird juju when you walk in, like something bad happened here. It could just be weird energy, you know, maybe there's, there's, this isn't every situation and I know not everybody thinks this way, but some people do. Right. Right. Let's say it's coming from like a bad divorce, right? The sale. And there's just a bad energy in the house. And sometimes you feel that stuff, you know, especially some of our clients that are more in tune with that. Yes. They'll... They feel things when they walk into properties and they know, but right. this was opposite. This, this was like opposite. feeling like, oh, this is the one. Yes. And so it was the one. And with every escrow, there's always challenges. So there were many challenges through this escrow that we overcame. And I feel like they totally came out on top because their appraisal came in and you guys, we got their house a hundred grand under asking and their appraisal came in over what they agreed to pay for the house. I was so happy for them because not only did they feel like they got a good deal when they got under asking, you know, everyone's a little bit worried, like maybe we overpaid for this house. But when your appraisal comes in and says, no, you got a a steal on this house, it appraised over what you paid for it. That just makes me feel so good. It just makes me so happy for my clients. Well, on top of that, there's another house that hit the market the day before they were supposed to close. A, a new active listing popped up in that community. Yes. And it, it popped up for um, like 75 grand more than they than they closed at, right? Right. Than they paid for. So when this popped up, I got a little uneasy. I'm like, oh, no, I hope it's not 
that much better than the house that they're getting. Right. I got to see this house because I already know they're going to compare. Anybody's going to compare, yeah, right? I mean, I wanted to compare. Sure. And I said, oh my gosh, you know, they they staged this home. It looks really nice. They did some upgrades. And but it's a little bit bigger and it, you know, I think it is it's way over the budget that they had in mind. But let me just see. And you guys, I told them, I'm like, this house is going to sell for so much more, which is great because it's going to push up the value in the community you just bought in. Right. And what happened with this house? It went pending already in the first week. Right. So we, so we, I know the the agent who's also the seller on that one, right? Right. And it went to more than 200 grand than our client paid for their house. Right. That is amazing. It's huge. They're walking instant into like equity. instant equity right off the bat. We're talking about from December to February. Yes. And That's that it. instant equity on the appraisal. And then to see another house come on in your brand new community that you just moved into with your family and to see it go in, go pending. Well, we can't wait to see what it actually closes for, but it is going to go for substantially more than what they paid for their house. So, so super excited. Would you say that? that not only is that's that's a perfect segue into our next segment right. of deal of the week, but that was a deal of a lifetime. Deal of a lifetime. Congrats to my buyers. So, I'm so excited for that. And then big congrats to you. Right. Great way to get this first quarter started off for Silver Realty. Yes. Thank you so much for making it happen for us. And let's just talk about this deal of the week coming up. Right? Yes, but before we go to that, we did have some comments. Oh, please. Yes. Yeah, so Tamika said energy is an actual thing in everything. And I couldn't agree more. The energy, for sure, on houses, right? Yes. I love that. And then Evelyn is here with us. Hey, Lulu. Hey, Lulu. She said, hey, guys. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate you. Thank you for joining yeah, us. Yes. So now, getting back to the deal of the week. All right. So Take this, it away. This deal of the week is on 28428 Orange Park Drive in Castaic. That is Williams Ranch, if anybody's wondering. Right. Four bedroom, three and a half bath on an almost 9,000 square foot lot. With panoramic views, Ooh, beautiful views. Nice. The seller has never lived in the unit. What? Yeah, so it was built. They were going to move in. They decided not to because they're buying somewhere else. Wow. Yes, I, I I have the whole backstory on it. That's something else. <laughs> but paid solar in a gated community listed at $1,130,000. Wow. Wait, how big is the house, though? The house you is know? about 2,300 square feet, 2,380. Wow. Ooh. This is enticing. It, and it's a three-car garage. Should we go look at it? I kind of want to go look at it. <laughs> but it I think it's a great deal. Right. That's Especially huge. paid solar. That's a big deal. And the view. So we we have a view property. Not like this is different. This is better a views. Panoramic views. Panoramic views. It brings so much value to the house. People really just don't does. understand. I mean, hundreds of thousands of dollars of view could bring to your house. Yes, absolutely. So Anybody wants to check that out? It's also single story. Let us know. But I definitely want to check it out later this week. Let's go. It sounds like an amazing deal. And that one just came on or has it been on for a bit? It it came on, went off real quick, and it just bombed, which is bomb is B-O-M back on market. Ooh, we need to go take a look at that. Well, uh, update for SCV. Do you want to talk about it? Sure. So in the last week, we have 44 new listings in SCV. 48 homes went under contract. Wow. And 36 homes sold. Wow. Things are moving quick. These, this is all upticking from, from the week before. Yes. So we're starting to see spring has come early. Right. So I'm telling you, get out there because it's going to be really, really uh, fast moving and a lot of competition. If anyone's more sitting on the sidelines. Coming, coming like in April, April to like July, August. The competition is fierce. It is. Okay. Well, inflation numbers came in higher than expected, which caused rates to go up almost half a percent. Overnight. So, Yeesh. for example, I, I quoted our, our new clients like a 6.875 rate. Uh -huh. And I looked it up after the report came out. Uh -huh. And that same 6.875 rate with all of their you know criteria was seven and a quarter. Oh, so my goodness. 0.375 for them. Wow. Okay, well, everybody, don't don't fall asleep. Stop it's time. pressing that snooze button. You so, need to get up. Let's so go. For people to understand what's happening, you know, jobs report came out. Jobs are still good. Okay, our, the inflation report came out. They want to keep it. The government wants to keep it under three percent. It came in at four, so we didn't we didn't meet it. There's a lot of stuff that goes into that, 
but number one is spending. We spend too much money as right. a government in the United States. So it's it's really keeping inflation numbers high. Um, it's worrisome because it is going to keep rates high for at least another month or two. Okay. Right. So, but any savvy buyers know you want to buy with the rates high. Yes. As soon as those rates dip, the market's going to go insane, it and it is. it already is crazy. But I think. I think we will see. I don't think we're going to see two percent again, right? For another twenty years, I don't know when, but I don't think we'll see that again, maybe in our lifetime. But I think we will see four percent again. Right. When I don't know within the next five years, right? But when we do see that, all the people that locked in at two percent rates, three percent rates, they'll be okay with selling because then right. they can grab something that's four or five, right? right. So I'm mm-hmm. telling you, get out there as soon as you can because the market is going to go <laughs> nuts and. There's not enough dance partners. There's a lot of buyers. It's going to bring more buyers, but there's still not enough homes to buy. Right. So get out there now before it gets too competitive. Yes. And, you know, this brings up an interesting topic, too. There is new construction out there, and they are offering some huge incentives. So if you're considering purchasing and you don't want to deal with, you know, um, competing with other buyers and getting outbid and doing counter offers and all that goodness, reach out to us because there's other options. You can go to new construction and they're offering incentives for your loans. Well, that's big because don't go there without us. Yes, you have to call us. Because they're not just telling you about these incentives. Mm -hmm. If they know you're going in there and you want to sign up, they're not going to tell you about the incentives. They're just going to sign you up and you're going to pay full price. Right. Don't pay full price. Have somebody negotiate for you, which is me or Corey, and we don't charge you a commission the the company pays us right for bringing you guys in and we're still and we're able to negotiate on your on your behalf absolutely you definitely need representation well looking ahead to next week friday is a big disney day for us it's not going to be raining on friday is it no it's not going to be raining i'm so excited i miss disney i haven't been in a while we should really try to leave early this time I know, because there's going to be gonna traffic. Be, it's going to be so busy on Friday, I'm sure. Because it's President's Day holiday weekend. weekend. I'm sure yes. there's going to be a lot of people there. That's okay. We still have fun when we go, even if there's a lot of people. And I'm really... Oh, look who decided to join us. Monica <laughs> is here with us. She said, hello, friends. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, Day Monica. I was just going to talk about you, because she was telling me all about her amazing trip. She went to Walt Disney World in Florida and had this amazing trip. I think she was there for a whole week. Just the view from her room. Oh my she, gosh. She's, it's like the, she's got to see a wake up to giraffes every day. The and, animal kingdom she stayed at. And oh, I'm not going to lie, that's a major FOMO yesterday when she was telling me about all the rides she went on and the amazing experiences she had. And I told her, well, I'm going to Disney on Friday. <laughs> Not the same, girl. It is definitely not the same. Um, she had an amazing time, and yeah, just we got it. We got to plan a trip to go to Walt Disney World well, at some point in time. When we stop paying for these annual passes, these <laughs> Disney keys, then we could talk about going to Florida for a trip. Too bad this key can't work there. Yeah, it doesn't not. Like, it doesn't unlock their magic. It does not make sense to pay for the key for Disney uh, Disneyland and then go pay for a trip at Disney World. I know. That's a no for me, dog. I know. It's way too much, but it it looks pretty amazing there. And she said Epcot Center. She'll go back there for that because it's so big that you have to go there multiple days. I'm I'm all for it once, once we let these passes go, these D- Disney keys I go. I don't know. I don't know if I could let it go. <laughs> She said, uh, Monica said, yes, a whole week was the best and the view was the best. And no, their magic sucks at Magic Kingdom. Ah, ha, ha. So, yeah, she said the Magic Kingdom was not magical oh, like boy. Disneyland. So that's comparable to Disneyland. She said they were rude there. Oh, that the no. cast members were not nice and that it was dirty. You know how when you go to Disneyland, there's always a cast member, even in the lines, sweeping up. Right. She said that it wasn't like that there. There's trash everywhere. Oh, boy. Gross. <laughs> Not in Florida. I know. But then it happened in Florida? Come on, Florida. I know. Get with it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Disney on Friday. And then we get to continue and resume with family dinner on Saturday, which I'm excited if about. If we don't have any more sickness. I know. Hopefully we all feel better. 
And then we have the four day holiday weekend. So so we have back to back. Friday's a holiday and then Monday's a holiday. Correct? Yes. What's the holidays? It's it's President's, President's Day. Day weekend. I think two I think presidents. It's like, it's Abe Lincoln and who else? I don't know. <laughs> it's so these are the things you forget as you get older, but the kids will know. They'll know because they're teaching it in school. Like, right. does that really need to stay in my no. brain bank? No, it doesn't. No. Just know we have a four day weekend. <laughs> but it's raining on Sunday. It is raining on Sunday. So we gotta we gotta get with with the houses and find out hey is, is this hike happening in the rain yes sheena what's happening with your birthday hike we're supposed to go hiking on sunday with her and to celebrate her birthday she might want to take a rain check oh boy poor thing oh so she, sheena does know the presidents that we're celebrating well, she's a teacher she she's know. a teacher it's george washington or she's a patriot one or the other oh uh, my mom knows too washington is that terrible first president we don't even know <laughs> i mean I mean, why do we only celebrate him? And uh, we're not even going to get into that. But <laughs> we're not going to get into a history get lesson into that, today. But yes, okay. So we will be celebrating President's Day weekend. So I was hoping that maybe we could take advantage of these President's Day sales, because you know all the all these places have sales on stuff for like appliances. If we're able to finally work on the Oxnard place, you know what? I, so I was thinking about this too, and I was thinking we could probably find flooring appliances see the problem is storing that stuff that's the problem because we could store it in the house but then you're just begging somebody to break in and steal all your stuff oh at the house i wouldn't leave it at the house someone's gonna steal it yeah exactly so then you have to leave it at our house in our garage there's no room and there's no room and i'm not <laughs> renting a storage we should just wait i don't know we could we could buy the flooring though maybe because it comes in like little cases, you know, so you could buy Let's the floor. Just price it out and then just be watching it, out, it. Check it out. Yeah, see what's There'll be see more what's sales. There'll be plenty of sales that come up. and They'll have know, a 4th of July sale next. I mean, they're, then they're going to have, a, you know, Christmas sale. Girl, they'll do have, not put that in the universe because <laughs> we need Black to have our Friday. house done way before those two, da- those two dates. <laughs> oh, Memorial Day sale. There, there'll be more sales. Uh, yeah, we'll see. We do need a dryer, though. We do need to put in the universe that we have these permits approved soon because I'm getting antsy. I want to go. Yes. Let's go. Let's do it. Because we got to hurry up and then we're going to have some headaches. We won't have any headaches. We're going to deal with the construction process, which is going to just be like rainbows and unicorns. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, um, oh, my goodness. I, I There was one other thing we were going to talk about, but I didn't see it. They go away. I think we're fine, baby. Oh, we're good. I think we're fine. I think <laughs> I think I think we need to feed you. I think Corey needs lunch. Corey needs some lunch. So and some decongestant. Yeah, and more importantly, we need to thank thank you everybody that joined us today. We really appreciate you guys. We hope you have a wonderful Valentine's Day or Galentine's Day or Palentine's Day, whichever one you celebrate today. I hope it's a great day. Yes, thank you for showing all the love today. We had some um, new guests join us, or maybe they watch us all the time but don't make comments. So we appreciate you chiming in, and thank you for helping make the show that much better. That's going to be our show today. Thank you again for hanging out with us here on r and Relationships and Real Estate. Be sure to catch us weekly on Facebook Live, or you can watch the show on YouTube. And to listen anytime you want, you can download full episodes on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Amazon Music. Music. We are your host, Corey and Chris Silva, and we'll catch you next week. Goodbye.